I was born um, about a mile from where I'm sitting. Uh, my parents were Joe and Irene Walker. Well, uh, my, my dad was a very hard worker. And uh, of course, we, we built a house here uh, several years ago to kind of help him through some difficult times. Dad farmed a lot. He was a farmer and uh, he uh, also raised uh, three houses of chickens. Back then it was small houses, it was 600, 600 uh, chickens per house. And uh, this, this house that we're living on here uh, is close to uh, two of those <laughs> that used to be there, you know. Farming was his main business. He did work out some to help with the income. Uh, uh, Mom was uh, sick quite a bit, and so uh, a lot of uh, doctor calls. And uh, but Dad hung in there and worked uh, uh, worked the farm, multiple crops. Uh, also, uh, had a, always had a good garden. The thing that Dad was very good about was handling Mom's illness, which was kind of out of reach, reach of. Uh, most of us, but uh, Dad was able to uh, handle it very well and, and keep up the work, and uh, uh, that's something I'll always cherish and remember about him. I basically helped Dad a lot in some of you know the outside chores, uh, uh, help 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 work in the garden, and also uh, of course he was one of the first to get the get chickens, and uh, so I helped him. Uh, on those three houses of chickens back then to uh, uh, kind of, in fact, I raised one house of, of chickens to help pay my college tuition fees. So it was, uh, it was good, it was hard work, but it was always rewarding work, you know, to be on the farm and do those things. One summer, in fact, it was two summers, I worked up at Steel Cannon Company at Springdale to help uh, generate some additional income. And, and then uh, uh, that, that matriculated uh, into some income that was, you know, helped me, you know, in, in college as well, so. Well, it, uh, working at Steel Cannon Company was hard work. It a lot of stacking of uh, goods and uh, line work and but it, it was interesting work and uh, we uh, I worked with several you know good workers that all of us worked together so well that was that was one thing uh, and uh, way of uh, helping in, in at the house and in, in some of the chores was mom was an excellent cook and uh, despite some of her illness she was able to always uh, uh, maintain an early breakfast. Dad, Dad always liked an early breakfast working on the farm and so uh, that that's one thing that uh, she handled very well and uh, sometimes uh, if she was in the hospital then it was up to Dad and I and I'd step in and help Dad with uh, any meals and some of the cooking. So it, back then that was an interesting uh, uh, capacity to be, be able to uh, fulfill that, you know, especially with Dad being, you know, working on as hard as he did on the farm. I was the only child. I was, didn't have any any support here, you know, with siblings. But my earliest memories at Tiny Town was right here uh, on the north side of the highway here was a great vineyard. John Zarden, uh, lived there many years and directly to the east of where we're at right now, Dick Fiore had a grape vineyard. In fact, he had a great, one grape vineyard directly to the east just past the fence line and then directly to the south just past the fence line was another grape vineyard. And as, as years went by, there was another grape vineyard directly west of us that uh, Nehemiah Masani had, and 
So I was sort of uh, brought up dead center of the grape industry. And uh, Dick Fiore to the east of us was a neighbor that, uh, that was very well liked. And my dad and him exchanged work a lot to uh, just uh, be able to uh, do the things they needed to accomplish. And of course, working in the grapes was a major thing then. And so I felt very privileged to uh, have grown, grown up this close to the grape, the grape industry and, uh, and those that, that uh, was really neighbors in, in, in doing that. Well, there's a, a lot of preparation, and you know, uh, the, the pruning was one of the primary things uh, to uh, accomplish uh, both in the after the season, before just before fall, and then in the early spring, uh, a lot of caretaking. We have ground uh, plowing and, and trimming, and getting the, the vineyard ready for the for the harvest when it you know come come up in August. You know, in labor uh, trading, uh, it was just more of a, a co-op. Uh, if uh, the neighbor needed something done, it was a, a courtesy that step in and help the neighbor, uh, whatever it was, and, it, and that would reciprocate. If, if uh, needed something done, and the it was. Uh, uh, just, just an exchange of, uh, of work that helped move, move everything along without uh, any additional cash you know, outlay. It was essentially informal. It was just done when needed, you know, uh, to help the, the neighbor uh, accomplish what was needed to, to, to get it done. And uh, I think uh, that's what being a good neighbor was all about. Welch's was importing to uh, the, the grape industry here in the area because uh, the Welch's had a plant. Excuse me, had a plant in Springdale, and so uh, a lot of folks marketed their grapes directly to Welch's for grape juice and, and various products that, that Welch's uh, done. Uh, most of them were contracted, and Welch just went through a period of time, and, and no need to go into detail on, on their difficulty, but they uh, really dropped the prices of the grapes, and it's just on, almost impossible for the, the uh, folks, to, uh, those that was raising grapes, to uh, make any kind of a profit and uh, come out on it. So a lot of the poultry industry was just starting to take hold on about then, and they uh, decided to uh, start building broiler houses, excuse me. And so grape vineyards started going out, and, um, and that coupled with time, a lot of grape, that's why we have not have very many grape vineyards at all now, is because of that. Uh, the, the, Poultry industry kind of taking hold, and and uh, grape vineyards started uh, going out, and some held on to their the grape vineyards, uh, cutting back. Uh, neighbor here, uh, Dick Fiore, he he kept a, a vineyard and uh, for, for quite a while, but uh, then others. Bigger vineyards, especially, was one that's got hit hardest, and uh, they made a decision to either push them out or do both, push them out and build some roller houses. There was uh, several stores in Tiny Town, and uh, grocery stores were a primary one, and I always remember going into uh, two of those, especially two of those grocery stores, and uh, just a real uh, interesting exchange of, of hellos and what was going on in the community at the time. And uh, as, as a boy growing up, that's that's what I remember most was, the, you know, uh, the, the the trading in those stores. 
Well, to, to eat out was just uh, t uh, a real treat because uh, we were pretty much uh, home buddies right here you know, on the farm. But the Venetia Inn, uh, from time to time, would go up there and that was real close. And uh, it ha had an early tradition of, you know, uh, Spaghetti, which you know, that, that was the real treat to go up, be able to go up and eat spaghetti in their home, homemade rolls. So uh, that that's the thing that I remember the most about uh, you know a restaurant being sort of introduced to the restaurant. Well, one way one way for sort of the owner, especially uh, uh, Alice Letterman, then was uh, just a real jewel. She would. Uh, Come up, uh, we come in the door and and just take us and seat us personally, and really you know treated us really really nicely. And I I you know I remember that back then is just uh, something really special to be, to be able to do that. Well, uh, businesses that that I was familiar with again just uh, comes comes back this way toward the farm, uh, Dick. Our neighbor, I mentioned prior, he uh, had a stand, a, a fruit stand. Uh, most every call, everybody called it a wine stand because he did provide a wine mostly from uh, another winery. But uh, why I was so uh, centered uh, with that particular business was Dick also uh, grew uh, apples. And he made apple cider, and then along with uh, the grapes, made the grapes, grape juice. So uh, I would go down and help him do grape juice and cider, help help uh, bottle it. it. Was one of my primary things I done was bottle, bottling the, uh, whether it be ju grape juice or apple cider. And uh, then another another treat, and growing up was. Uh, he had uh, three girls, uh, Helen, Mary Catherine, and Pauline, and uh, I would sit beside them uh, doing the bottling and uh, never realized it at the time, just really how fortunate I was. I went in the Air Force in 1958 and 1962, through 1962, and after that we settled in, in Febble. And of course, this came came about after uh, uh, I was married while in the Air Force to uh, Carol. And uh, so we uh, lived in Febble until uh, just about 20 years ago when we decided to build out here. Like I, I mentioned earlier, we built built here, uh, and so. From that, from uh, during that time, um, we still came out and visited the folks quite frequently, and uh, so I, essentially, I uh, have never really left this area. Although I lived in Febble that period of time, we'd come out uh, out here uh, to visit the folks and kind of keep up with their their health and how things were uh, going with them. Well, this is the interesting part of where I went to school. I uh, went to school at Brush Creek, which is directly uh, northwest of here, just uh, about four miles. And I went there through the first six grades. And then the system uh, consolidated, and uh, we started going to Springdale. So I went. Uh, the Springdale, the, the next six grade levels, and graduated in 1957 there at Springdale High. Friends and classmates uh, that I remember the most was uh, we had neighbors to the west of here, uh, the, the Lynches, and Ralph Lynch. I went to school with all the times, walking, we'd walk together down to uh, Brush Creek to the, uh, early in the morning. And uh, then 
the other classmate I, uh, was uh, that I remember very well in that we started the uh, first grade together, and that was Carolyn Page, who lives just directly west of, or excuse me, east of us here. And uh, Carolyn and I was the only one that went uh, from the Brush Creek that went through all 12 grades together. I uh, went through six grades down at Brush Creek and then went and graduated at Springdale High in 1957. Well, we always had, in way of school teachers, uh, very interesting. Every one, each one was unique in, in the way they handled uh, a class, a classes one through 12 under the same roof, same uh, open room policy. How they handled that was just uh, amazing. But uh, Gladys Collins was one that uh, taught several years at Brush Creek. I believe, uh, if I remember, he uh, serves me right here at three grade levels. I, I went uh, under her, and she was a very disciplinarian school teacher. And uh, you'd done things right, or you got called in. So. Uh, Gladys, I kept up with her right until she passed away just a few years ago. She was just an outstanding school teacher. Something that, that was real close to me when I was growing up was certainly going to uh, Brush Creek School. And uh, I had a new bicycle. At, uh, I believe I was in the fifth grade at Brush Creek at the time. and. Rode the, the bike down to school that morning, and uh, the gr road had been just graveled or just graded. And uh, I went off a hill going down to the school, but too fast, and went airborne and knocked myself out on impact. And a neighbor at the bottom of the hill found me and put both me and the bicycle in the truck take me back up to the house here. And uh, I woke up coming back. And when I got back to the house, I was feeling okay, but just, just a little dizzy. And uh, I wrecked the bike and tore my shirt to shreds because I rode in the gravel. And uh, I, th I thought at the time, well, I went down Garrett Hill a little bit too fast. He was, uh, he lived at the bottom of uh, the Garrett Hill, or it was called, and uh, I, I didn't know him real well personally. My dad knew him, and so he knew where I lived and got me back up here safely. Well, the, the, most, the most prominent way of uh, the Italians, uh, I, I, think I would have to, you know, our neighbor, Dick and Florence Freire, was just uh, second to none. We have outstanding uh, folks to be associated with. And uh, Dick, Dick was one of the kind, he could fix anything, uh, just was a, a real gentleman in way of, uh, how he handled things, and uh, he taught me a few things just by, just by his worth ethics and how he done things. Uh, he could uh, fix a radio, he could uh, um, work on a apple cider barrel, he could do numerous farm chores, and uh, those are the type of people I was closest to, you know, and, and we have knowing, knowing folks, you know, from the Italian community. Well, it, it was unique in that uh, and the way we were treated was just, just like Dick Fiore there that uh, was our neighbor and, and him and dad exchanged, you know, work. Uh, knowing him, it was just like knowing uh, a close relative. 
uh, it was just uh, a fantastic uh, experience to uh, grow up under that, that atmosphere. Uh, my my grandparents, uh, John and uh, John and Craig, uh, they they went to Harmon Methodist, and so as as I grew up, Mom was closer to uh, to that church and had a, a tremendous tremendous impact on on attending Sunday school, uh, as well as uh, uh, during the summer that have Bible. Uh, classes and so I got to know a lot of folks uh, related to the or that was close to the the Harmon Methodist Church and we ended up uh, joining that church along with a close two close friends of mine uh, Jimmy Lynch and uh, and uh, Danny McCamey and uh, so three of us was uh, joined that, that church at the same time back then. Well, for, for fun, after the, the, the family or the work chores, uh, getting, that, getting that done, uh, bicycling was a favorite thing to do. Uh, a lot of times we would uh, cycle and uh, a couple friends that was close, uh, uh, we would, back then, uh, Cowboys and Indians was a favorite pastime to uh, participate in, playing your role, whatever role that uh, you would like to uh, accept as a, a sort of fantasy. And uh, so my, my neighbor would, uh, was a fan of Tom Mix back then. It was a, Tom Mix was a, both an actor and a, a, you know, just kind of a overall idol. Uh, I, I liked Hopalong Cassidy. Uh, Bill Boyd was uh, his, his uh, official name, but there's something about Hopalong Cassidy and those two side guns that I always. Uh, like the fantasy, so we'd, we'd, we'd uh, stretch out our territory and he'd be Tom Mix and I'd be Hopalong and Cassidy and uh, we accomplished quite a bit doing that. <laughs> well, parents and neighbors are, you know, f close friends. A lot of card games back then, uh, the folks would get together and uh, have refreshments and play cards. And that was just a, a favorite thing they liked to do. And uh, a lot of folks uh, would go to the movies and uh, would uh, <clears throat> go. Uh, Salem Springs had a movie theater and we'd go down there from time to time. And then Springdale had two movie theaters. And so uh, my first experience. Uh, in Springdale and going to a movie that's the first edition of Gone with the Wind. And uh, that was, uh, I will always remember that movie, movie just the way it unfolded and uh, what went on. It was certainly, uh, as years went by, became known as one of the uh, all-time greats. But to see it in its first edition was a real treat. My aunt, uh, which lived up the road, uh, Roxy Neal, she, uh, she loved the Great Festival. And so she was kind of an influence on us to, to go up. And uh, then, uh, of course, our neighbors, uh, uh, the, the girls I mentioned, uh, Helen, Mary Catherine, and Pauline, all three of them run for Tontown Queen at one time or the other. So... Uh, it was always uh, uh, interesting to see uh, the organization behind that and what uh, what they'd do to make it uh, make it a good experience. And it certainly back then it wasn't the size that it is now, but to uh, see that unfold and, and the hard work that was put into it, even though it was smaller, was just a real real. Uh, pleasure to be around. 
Mem Memories of the Grape Festival was, of course, growing up was basically like uh, a lot of kids like to do was go to that carnival. And uh, the carnival drew the younger generation, you know, to, to participate and, and enjoy. Uh, I always had live music and uh, then various family families would uh, work it, you know, uh, whether it be uh, the bingo uh, part of it or some other attraction uh, at the Great Festival. Uh, it was just a real community effort. And uh, yeah, I, uh, the grapes, you know, always got, always got my attention because I'd see uh, the uh, those participating to uh, bring their grapes and, and show them there at the, uh, at the grape festival was uh, fascinating to me because I was around the grapes so much here from, you know, from the house. And Dick Fury, he always had entries. And uh, so, uh, you know, that, in, in, in attending the grape festor, festival, that was what, I, as a boy growing up, fascinated me was the carnival and the, the grapes and the music. And, and uh, I always heard of them having uh, dances in the uh, school basement. But uh, as a boy growing up, you know, you didn't pay too much attention to that. It was a carnival and uh, kicking around, you know, and enjoying the festival that way was, was, was the fun part. I never, I never did work at the Great Festival. I, uh, it just something that didn't come about during the, the time I was growing up from the farm here and, and the duties, uh, extra duties a lot of times and just helping dad out do uh, the farm work. Cause he, like I say, he, uh, we had the chickens to take care of and we had uh, crops uh, Dad grew a, a large, uh, a lot of times more than one field of tomatoes, so there was tomatoes to harvest. So it was just a lot of work that went on in, uh, in uh, keeping the farm up. The, the only thing uh, in, in uh, helping at, at uh, Great Festival, and it's mostly in with support because Dick would be getting his grapes uh, ready, and so Dad a lot of times would help him get those uh, get the grapes basketed and, and and prepared to take up to the grape festival so outside of there was more support you know in that that way than uh, working directly at the grape festival well the the, the road out front here uh 068 or just a two-lane road my goodness you know uh, thinking back to how quiet it was i think <laughs> you know uh, compared to now but the road back then was, uh, of course, it was a paved road. Road 68 was a paved road. But uh, where I'm, where I'm at right now, uh, going west, 068 ended when they built 412, and the 068 used to curve right back to the right, right to the north. And so a two-lane road went through a lot. Of of hilly terrain, curvy terrain. It was just a very dangerous highway. A lot was killed. And this this uh, place where I'm living now, it used to be called, and it's still called, Borker's Corner because we were riding a curb here where we lived and uh, a number of, of bad wrecks uh, occurred. Uh, and I, I won't enumerate on the intensity of those wrecks because uh, some folks died in those wrecks. So it was very unsettling uh, in growing up to see all that happen. And my folks are taking it very well. Uh, Mom, even at times, uh, even though she had some illness there, uh, would step right in and help uh, comfort some of those that had uh, bad wrecks. But, uh, that that is the the hard memories I, I think back of 068 and, and uh, going into town uh, certainly uh, the, it was a, a better ride a better uh, enjoyable experience of driving into Springdale 
uh, than it is now because back then it, it was you know limited traffic it wasn't it intense traffic going down 68 and uh, so we uh, here uh, on this this where we live right now uh, we helped uh, 412 go straight and widen that road to make it a safer road. At the, at the time, it, it, it was very pronounced in how much it really did help. Now we're go undergoing uh, additional uh, growth problems and growth strains to uh, uh, make that uh, still as develop, developed into a, a very, uh, what I call, unsafe journey traveling the road. Back when I was growing up uh, and way of seeing the town and area changed, it was very slow change. It was really uh, something new came in. It was it was uh, a real interesting occurrence. Now we have so much you know fast growth going on. It, it's just nearly mind boggling about the change that is going on. But back then. You know, you had uh, uh, store changes, store ownerships. It was just very limited, and it didn't have that much uh, uh, in way of additional change going on. Uh, that's that's what I remember, you know, the most about in, in way of change. It just back then wasn't the pace that it is now in way of the change going on. I had. Picked Tony Town, but, uh, just from uh, unique experience of living in an area that you enjoy. I have uh, picked Tony Town from people I know and I feel comfortable with, and growing up here and, and still still living here. Uh, Picking Tiny Town has not been by essentially choice because of just being born right within a stone's throw of where I'm sitting. So I have stayed here on purpose because of family ties and just enjoying the fellowship and the, the neighbors. That, that we share. That's the main thing. I would I would tell someone that hasn't been here before or is not acquainted with Tawny Town that that Tawny Town is uh, recognized number one as a very clean community. Number two, it is Tawny Town has certainly opportunity now, and Tawny Town is growing solid. It's it's uh, growing. Uh, the uh, I think the uh, city fathers are, are keeping uh, the best interest of the community at hand and and trying their best to uh, withstand the, the growth that is going on. But for someone new coming, I think the uh, and we've had those that that pass through and just love it and come back. So. It's appealing because it is a, a safe, clean community. My favorite thing about Tiny Town would be the people. Uh, I, I think it's it's hard to go beyond without elaborating a lot of, of those things that you do appreciate. Uh, but the, the people, I think, is the, uh, the reason I stay here. Uh, if we didn't like the people, we cer cer certainly wouldn't stay. But my ties and, and, and knowing, uh, the sad thing is that at, at my age of seeing people pass on that uh, has been your, your neighbor and your good friends for a long time. But uh, the, the folks near you that you, you've known for a long time you appreciate what they do and their involvement and their contributions they make to the community. So 
to me, that's, that's the most important aspect of, of living here, is, is your neighbor and the good friends that you develop over the years.